All right. Welcome back, everybody, to the Kingdom Conscience Conversations podcast. I'm your host, Selena, and I am so excited about our guest today. I think you all are going to enjoy this uh, episode. We have Christian KJ Parker in the house. (laughs) Welcome, Christian. How are you? I'm good. How are you? I'm good. Now, do you want me to call you Christian or you want me to call you KJ or does it um, Either one is fine. I know a lot of people, they just be like KJ. So Okay, KJ. All right. That sounds yes, good. Sounds <laughs> good. So I want to begin this uh, conversation just with you introducing yourself to our audience. There may be people listening who m- maybe haven't heard of you, don't know what you do. So just introduce yourself. All right, everybody. What's up? My name is Christian K.J. Parker. I was born in the 731 area code Jackson, Tennessee, but raised here right in Memphis, Tennessee, 901. So what's up, everybody? All right. Right. Okay. And so this is how I kind of came across K.J. We actually are in the same, uh, I guess you could say, denomination. We're we're Koja kids. And uh, so I, I was... I think I noticed her, um, some of the people I follow, and then, you know, some of the musicians was following her. So I was like, oh, my goodness, this girl, she plays with so much passion and so much, I mean, just skill. If you have not seen her, you need to go follow her on Instagram right now. And um, I was just so impressed and so moved because it wasn't just like, to me, I could see you weren't just playing, you were ministering to me, and you took it seriously. And I mean, like I said, the passion was just phenomenal. I want to start out by saying, you know, where did this come from? Like, did you come from a musical family? Um, how did you, how did you get, you know, where you are? Okay, so um, yeah, I, I did come from a musical family. Actually, my dad, he's a pastor, and my mom's a first lady, so I get it. You know, the PK, all of that. Yes, ma'am, I understand. So, right. Um, my dad, his side of family is more like the musician and stuff. And my dad, he okay. actually used to play drums. So I think that's pretty cool. He says mm-hmm. that he's retired, but he's not. Um, and then my mom's side, they're the singing side. So um, just to be able to hear it, both of those sides, are, I think it's cool. Yes, very cool. So does that mean KJ sings too? <laughs> just a little bit, just a little uh... bit. <laughs> So are there any other instruments? For those of you, if we haven't made it clear, she's a drummer. She plays percussion. And um, but are there any other instruments? Because I know sometimes, especially, you know, drummers in the church, they kind of start or maybe they start on drums and then they move to the piano or move to the bass or whatever. Are there any other instruments that you play? Um, just a little bit of everything, just a tad bit. Um, Ooh, drums okay. is my primary, but um, just a little bit of keys and a little bit of bass. Guitar. All right, cool. So did you study professionally or um, I, I should say maybe academically? Did you study music or are you looking to do that? Or tell us a little bit about that. Yes, ma'am. So um, I was at some time taking drum lessons. Uh, my drum mentor, he just passed like this past year, but he was one of the coolest drum mentors, uh, Marlis Flowers. Oh, um, that. Thank you, thank you. But um, he was a big influence in, you know, me, you know, becoming a cool drummer, as we know today. Um, also, another guy, Chris Pat, um, he okay. tours with, I think, Christina Aguilera and some of the other cool artists. So just to be able to study under these types of, you know, male influences is yes. huge, very huge. So, yes, ma'am. Yes, that's awesome. Awesome. Now, when you talk about, you know, your study and things like that, can you take us into a typical day of practice for KJ? Like, is it is it every day? Is it just like when you get inspired and you you hear something in your head or you hear a song that inspires you to go? Um, Let us know where and then where do you practice? Do you practice at home? Do you go to the church? by yourself do you do a little bit of both let's just we just want to dig into you okay, today. Okay, i see i see so um the typical day it's not every day even okay. though i do listen to music every day and it's not always just the gospel genres it's all okay. over like okay. i love the african the you know the brazil I'll, just all just to be all the way around it mm. um i think it's it's beneficial in my playing as well um 
Wow, this is this is a great question. So, um, like I said, I don't practice every day, but when I do, it's either here at the house, but mostly at the church. And okay. Get a feel of all the genres. I just play whatever comes to mind. Whatever. Okay. Yes, cool. Ma'am. And I see. Um, I think that's phenomenal. Actually, I do have a music education background, so um, I studied music a little bit, long, long time ago. <laughs> <laughs> but um. It's so important, I believe, that we're not boxed in. Right. And right. Um, we see that more now, but kind of in my day, you know, it was a little shunned when I was coming up. I was about, I started late. I started playing keys late in life. To me, it seems late. When you look at y'all young people now. I was I was 17 when I started. And, you know, you kind of encouraged to just stick with listening to, you know, just the gospel and but now, so your parents had no problem with you just kind of branching out and listening to other genres, jazz. Yeah, like, we do it all the time as a family, you know, just yeah. listening. Yeah, I stuff. love it. I it's love it family. because to me, you know, they say music is the universal language. So, it is. You know, it it, is. It's, it's, the, it's the language that you can play. It don't matter where you are on the continent or where you are in the world, they, they can understand your music. So right. I love that. And I think all musicians should be encouraged to, you know, branch out, you know, listen to a different kinds, country, rock. Everybody can give us something. You know what I'm saying? Right. It's not all about the shout. It's not. You know, it's about, you know, just exploring different options. You know, I think it's it's cool. I think it's really cool. Yes, ma'am. Yeah. Talk about that. It ain't all about the shop. It's I- not. It's not. <laughs> <laughs> and sometimes you do see that's, you know, them click track, do, click tracks. Do you, you play with that, right? Yes, ma'am. <laughs> now, don't you think, do you, what is your opinion on that? Do you think now that, because back in the day, we didn't used to do that. We didn't used to have click tracks all the time. You think they're necessary? Do you think it's something, it's a vital part of the, um, uh, the okay. I think? think it's a little bit of both. Okay. Um, this generation, they mm-hmm. are a little bit too dependent on the click track and not, you know, just go with the flow. Right. I love to just go with the flow. Like, but it is kind of necessary. It is, okay. but sometimes it's just better just to go with the flow. Okay. Yes, yeah, yes. I, I agree with you for those who are, uh, time challenged that's maybe right. that's a good <laughs> right. way to say it you know those who are a little bit challenged on keeping that time uh so that's cool that's cool all right so let's get a little bit into the well our podcast is about highlighting you know um people who excel in the kingdom not just in ministry but also in the marketplace um so that's The idea came to me to really highlight those who are doing, who are representing Christ, representing the kingdom and and representing excellence because the kingdom is excellence in everything that they do, whether it's business, whether it's you behind a microphone, you singing, you playing, whatever it is. So obviously that's what I I saw in you. I saw you representing the kingdom Um, and I, you know, I kind of got it by seeing you but I want to hear you um do you consider this a ministry or is this just something that you God has gifted you to do and you enjoy doing it and I want you to elaborate a little bit do you consider it a ministry um so it's both um to be able to get my gifts from God I think that it's it's cool you know Mm -hmm. for myself to enjoy but to be able to travel and just to do it for fun, but to know that you're ministering. And it may not just be all gospel events right. that I may, you know, partake in, mm-hmm. but just to see how my gift is being used to, you know, just to spread, you mm-hmm. know, the gospel and just to see how people um, just be like, wow, she's a female artist. Like, what? Like, she's doing this? And just to see... I, I just love to have fun with it. That's my yeah. whole big thing, but to make sure that I give all the glory and praise to God. So, Amen. Amen. Yeah. And like I said, I can see that, um, but I wanted to just hear from you. Like, is this, do you really consider this a ministry? And then m- my next question is, how do you maintain that mindset of ministry? Even when God moves you outside of the four walls of the church, 
how do you maintain that mindset? Like, is there a prayer you say before? Do you always see God? Or, you know, just explain that to us. Okay. Um, prayer is important. Um, mm -hmm. Of course, I'm a PK and I know some PKs, they may shy away from church and stuff, but I, I, I love church. I'm mm -hmm. churchy. Me and my siblings, we are churchy. Okay. You can take us to the store. We're going to be churchy with you. So <laughs> yeah, it doesn't matter. Um, so yeah, just to be able to partaking to something like that. That's why I, I just love church. I'm a shut in girl. I love shut in. Oh, oh, I'm only 20, Ooh, but I know. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, I think I think it's um it's cool. And just to be blessed, like I said, with the gift from God, mm -hmm. be able to minister. Um, like I said, even if it's not in the gospel aspect of mm -hmm. things, um, I always make sure that I pray before. Um, even on the plane, be like, God, you know, just just use me and know my hands. And even when I talk, even when I speak, you know, it's that that plays a big factor in things as well. It plays a big factor in character and attitude. Um, so just being open and honest. Yes, ma'am. Hey, man, I love that. I love that. And and that exudes from you. Like I said, you play with such passion. You play with such um, you just just amazing. And I can see even <clears throat> when you interact with, you know, your fans or the people who follow you, you, you just have a spirit of humility. And I really appreciate that. And I want to honor you for that. Thank you. Because um, I mean, I'm, I believe the sky is the limit for you. Um, I don't think, you know, as they say, and I know this is kind of churchy too. eyes have not seen ears have not heard. Neither has it entered into the heart of man what God has prepared for KJ. Let's see, let's see, let's see. It's coming. <laughs> let's come. It's coming. Yeah. It's coming. So, um, so still staying along the line of ministry, do you consider yourself a modern day David? <clears throat> and when I say that, I have to give you a little context. We all know King David. We know his story, but we know that God anointed him to play. And he was he was called to play for for Saul. Saul called him, and when he would play, you know, basically he would change his mm -hmm. his countenance. He would change right. his atmosphere. Right. Um, and I am a firm believer, especially in the church, that the the minstrel is so important. You know, like I know, we can manipulate services, and I know that word sounds bad, but some people. No, it's true. It's we, true. You've seen it. You all you have to do is play a certain chord, a certain group of chords. Right. You can get some reaction out of people. Ain't it's you know whether it's genuine or what. I, I'm not going to speak on, but you know what I'm saying. Yes, ma'am. So, exactly. You, what about even with your instrument, the drums? Do you consider yourself? Have you ever been in a situation or a service or maybe a gig that you you know your plan was? be affecting the way things are shifted things if you will um yes ma'am um i do consider myself a modern day david but it's not just me i know it's other musicians as well mm -hmm. um, that's why it's important you know to so associate yourself with god-fearing musicians mm -hmm. um, and if, even if they're not god-fearing away like if they don't have the gospel background just to be alongside good musicians that understand the importance of music in that yeah. in that way um so yes ma'am um wow this is this is so deep <laughs> you know, I was looking at the scripture as well you know with David and his playing and him driving out the evil spirit from Saul that was cast on him by God you know mm -hmm. so just to see that um yes ma'am uh, yeah. I, this past weekend, um, I was actually in South Carolina and just to see the spirit move just from us playing. Okay. You know, um, it was me, um, my bro, Michael Smalls, and another guy on bass, his name is Emmanuel. Mm -hmm. And it was a point in time where it was just, there was no talking. Like, of course, people were, you know, exhorting God, mm -hmm. but just to see how our instruments just change the atmosphere yes. in a good way. Cause some way. like what like what you was just saying, some courting and maybe how you even hit the symbols, that can play a huge part in the atmosphere change in yes. a service. So 
Yes, ma'am. Yeah, that's awesome. That's awesome. So, so tell us a little bit about wh what you did over the weekend. You said, was it a recording? Was it a, a gig? Was it just a service? Tell us about it. Can I First I of think all, of my know? gigs as ministry assignments. Okay, you know, okay. Even if it's not gospel, I'm like, this is still ministry because you I never know it. what that can do. You know, yes. a gig and you know, yeah, I know yeah. what I'm saying, gig. I know. Okay, okay. But um, <laughs> yeah. So I was actually in the Atlanta area and in South Carolina for an installation service, and then to be able to play um at another service back in South Carolina. So okay. yes, ma'am. This exactly what I did and just to see how the people responded in a good positive way and just to be um just to be seen in mm -hmm. that aspect of of things I, yeah. think, I think it was a very cool experience for me yes yeah, man, it was yeah. Very cool. yeah it sounds like it okay <laughs> on on that note um who would you if you can name any artist they don't have to be gospel any artist that you could hook up with, do it, you know, perform with, be on their project, who would it be? Uh, let's do top three. <laughs> let's do top three. Top three. Yeah. Oh my God. This is so hard. I, I love, this is really hard for me. This, this is, is hard. Really hard. <laughs> oh, Queen Latifah for one. I love her. Really? Three. She's just, she's iconic. She is. she is iconic. I did not expect that just because I guess I was just, when you said her name, I focused on her rap career, but she is an awesome vocalist as well. Yes, ma'am. Yes, yeah. ma'am. Okay. Um, so I would say her. Oh, my God. I got to put these two together. The Brat and Missy Elliott. Ooh, okay. Okay. Both oh, of them. Oh, Sheila E, I gotta put her in there. Okay, I have to. Yes, yeah, she's she's on it. She's on is it, it. Is there any other female other than she? When we talk about the greatest uh, female percussionist, Sheila E is at the top. Right, is she's at the top. Is she's at the top. She actually like paved the way for a lot of what we do yeah. today. So I think, yeah. Is there is there anyone else? Because I, I might not be familiar. Is there another female musician like kind of under her? I don't thought I don't think I don't think so. I'm trying to think. It's it's a lot. It's it's so many of them. Oh my god. Oh okay. um, now female musicians that I do look up to as far as the drumming aspect mm -hmm. of things. That's uh Vanzella Joy. Um is that is she the pocket queen? No, ma'am. That's that's another um uh, that's another female drummer. But okay, yeah, okay. Queen too. Okay. Poppy Queen as well. Um, <laughs> like I said, Vanzella Joy. Mm -hmm. Um, because I know she plays with Beyonce and Ari Lennox. She she travels and does oh, things. Wow. Like that. Okay. So, See so you you teaching our audience. I love it. <laughs> <laughs> yes, ma'am. I'm trying to think of who else. Uh, Jay Latoya. Like Jay Latoya. Yeah. yeah, she's yeah. from Atlanta, right? Yes, yes, ma'am. Oh, in that okay. area. Okay. Uh, That's cool. Yeah. yeah. Okay. I didn't know that was gonna be that hard. Uh, yeah. <laughs> but as far as the artists working with artists, yeah. If I had to name like some people of my generation, I'd probably say like Samara Joy. Ooh. Like yes. Jeez. Ooh we just yes. that would yes. be amazing just to be, to be able to collab. Um, I'm trying to think of who else. Now let me go to the male side of things. The male okay. side. Okay. Uh, J. Cole. Oh, I love J. Cole. Okay. okay. Yes, I know we both have the same birthday. So, do? yeah, yeah. <laughs> so I'm like, oh, I can relate to him, you know? <laughs> yeah. Um, it's another guy. His name is Sergio Mendez. He's like mm. in the South America area, you know? Okay. Um, he's a different vibe. He does like the Bossa Nova, Brazil. Okay. He's an yeah. uh, OG, you mm. know? In the music uh, world, and if I had to say one more, oh Jesus Christ, <laughs> I'll probably say Jay Z. Oh wow, okay. So I, I'm seeing, I'm seeing heavy hip hip hop. Uh, yeah, it's okay. just so, it's just that whole era of hip hop is just real and authentic. Not saying that it's not real and authentic now. Mm -hmm. But just some back then, it was just oh, yeah. it was just hidden, you know what I mean? All, that, uh, all those people you talking about, they was here before you was even. Probably. Right, that's what I'm saying. I'm, 
just I'm I'm 20, but I just I just love it. That's good. And, and when you think about when you think about the way hip hop started too, um, percussions and beats, that was like the foundational portion of it. And even the fact of rapping is a rhythmic kind of percussive right. way of saying poetry, if you will, you know, so that's pretty cool. I mean, I did not expect those answers, but I, I love it. <laughs> I love it. And so, you know, it was funny that we kind of did the, the female and then the male. So that's my next question. Um, when I got started, even though we had like Twinkie Clark's I really could not really talk to you about many female organists. And so I felt like I was like, you know, alone. I felt like I was somebody trying to pave a way in, in the midst of this male dominated um, field, which it seemed in the church. Right. Now I think it's a little bit better. We see a lot of female musicians popping up everywhere. Right. And I love that. I love that. Um, so I want to ask you, have you had in your in your short lifespan, <laughs> but if, have you had any, have you run in, into any like encounters or any rejection or any um, resistance? I probably should say just because you're a female um, percussionist in a male dominated field of instrument. Um, yes, ma'am. All the time, actually. Even if they don't say anything, which I think, ma'am. Yeah. Anyways, <laughs> um, yeah, I, I, I see. So, uh -huh. yes, ma'am. Um, I get that all the time. Like I said, even if they don't say anything, just the stares alone, like, mm -hmm. you know, she's a female. Right. Like, and first you, of all, I'm a black female. There you go. That's a whole, whole nother thing that's right there. That's right there. Right. right. Um, so like, like say if you coming up uh, for a ministry assignment, do you feel like they kind of, they sizing you up before you even hit the, hit the drums? Do you feel like you have, you know, like something to prove because they looking at you something like, what's she about to do? You know, they giving you those looks or something. How do you, how do you deal with that? How do you deal with that? I just stay true to myself. Like mm -hmm. I said, prayer. Oh, Lord, if I didn't have prayer, I don't know what. <laughs> I don't know. Um, prayer, it works. It really works. And I, like I said, I don't have nothing to prove. I just let God get the glory. Amen. I just Amen. let God get the glory. That's the number one thing. Like, yes, I may feel intimidated because we're human. We have emotions. We have feelings. That's why it's right. called life. We make mistakes. Right. You do, you know, um, mm -hmm. But I just I just let God move. Mm -hmm. You know, I'm like, God, I'm not here to, you know, just just so I can get my name out there. I'm here because of you. Yeah. So just, you work through me mm. and I'm giving back to you. That's that's my whole bottom line goal. That's that, and that's absolutely wonderful. I think it's a wonderful perspective, wonderful position to have, because the Bible does tell us, you know, if we were humble ourselves that he would exalt us. So let him do the raising because when he take you up there, you're going to stay there. You know, right, we try, right. we try to climb that ladder ourselves. Sometimes we know we could do this or that and maybe we'll, you know, get this, but that's not an integral way of doing right. it. So I love that answer. And I think there is no, you can't, you can't lose having a, a humble spirit. You cannot yes, lose. Yeah. And like, and, and I'll, I'll say that too. Um, when I look back on my younger years, yeah, you do kind of get intimidated and you feel yes, a little shaky, you know, like, oh, you know, and I had a really bad problem with second guessing myself. Oh man. Did I, I still do that sometimes. Like, uh, I don't know God, but you know, right. I'm going to trust you. That's my right. Right. And, and like you said, the prayer is what really helped me. Like, I'm like, Lord, you got to do this. You, you gave me this gift. You call me, so you work it out, you know. Right. So yeah, I, I I love it. I love it. And I'm telling you, I'm just so honored to sit with you and just chat. I think it's so cool. I'm definitely gonna be following your ministry. I'm looking for you yeah. to be on major projects. Um, um, do you write? Um, yes, yeah, so I love to just compose things. Uh, okay. I, I just I love it. Um mm -hmm. Funny, cool, fun fact. I love the Jurassic 
park the whole series of things. Oh, okay. I love the orchestra. So just to be able to, yeah, yeah. yeah. So just, you know, just to hear all of that, it, uh -huh. it's just so amazing. And so just to, you know, be able to, let's see if I can try a little bit of this, try a little bit of that into mm. uh, what I do. Even uh, on my Instagram, kdro123, by the way. Go follow. Yes. <laughs> Has to that in there. Right. Um, some of the stems that, that I do make for that particular Sunday, mm -hmm. that's, that's all me. But I take my, I put my own little spin on it from what okay. I know here. You know, okay. like, oh, let's see how this works out, you know. Or maybe like throw a little hip hop song in, but let's see, let's make this little gospel, little groove or something, you know what I mean? So I think that's cool. Think so that's so cool. you're going to have to interpret for some of our people who don't know what a stem is. <laughs> <laughs> so a stem is just like a, it's a cool group of instruments that you make um, on a music software base mm -hmm. with the keyboard or, you know, with the microphone. So, okay. yes, that's yes. A stem. All right. <laughs> <laughs> so you really get into the you starting to get into the music technology part of the yes, thing. Yes, ma'am. Yes, ma'am. <laughs> and this is just a question for me. What is your um, program of choice? So I love to program in Logic. I think it's just easier for me. It's okay. easier. Um, yes, Pro Tools. Pro Tools is good for like recording and things. Okay. But me personally, I just love Logic. It's just so easy to maneuver into Ableton. And mm -hmm. now I do use Ableton, but mostly Logic. Mostly Logic. And I've heard that I have a, a little cousin who's getting into uh, producing and stuff. And she keeps telling me, you need to do Logic. Logic, <laughs> you know, I'm it's old school. Easy. It's so easy. <laughs> <laughs> okay. All right. Look, so we're going to wrap up this conversation. I know you're probably busy. And have many things to do, but we do appreciate you. So, um, second to last question: What advice would you have for any upcoming uh, musicians? You got some young bucks, hopefully listening. <laughs> you got to find it, do what you do, and and be where you are. Give them a, a tidbit of advice. Um, yes, ma'am. So, um, stay true to you. Um, let God use you. You know, don't do it just for the likes and all of that. Just let God, it's going to, all all of that is going to come in due time. All you just got to do is just stay the course um, and trust God. Also, mental health is important. Your mental health is important. Um, so just make sure that you have an outlet besides your various instruments, you know, even your voice. Your voice, it's, it's an instrument as well. So just make sure that you have an outlet besides that, you know, maybe go to the park. I love to bowl. I'm a bowler. So okay. that's, that's what I do. Uh, <laughs> so just bowl if you want to cook. I think it's I think stuff like that is so cool. So yeah, just stay true to you and be authentic. Be authentic. Be authentic and trust God. Trust God. I love it. Stay true to you. Be authentic and love God. I love it. I love it. I love it. So how can we find you, those people who are are listening out there and they said, man, I want to look her up. I want to see what she's doing. How can they find you? Okay. So if you have an Instagram, uh, follow me, kdrum123. If you don't have an Instagram, please get an Instagram and yes. follow me, kdrum123. Um, and just uh, just contact me through there and we'll, we'll just move from on there. So All yes, right. Me. All right, shout out your church because I know you said your dad was a pastor, your mom's a first lady. Yes, ma'am. You are in Memphis, right? Yes, ma'am. Memphis, Tennessee, um, 2941 Chandler Street, FFC Faith Fellowship, the Cathedral of Great Faith. Um, meet us there, 9 a.m. on Sundays. Um, it's not long. We let God move, but we out of there by 11. or Yeah, like, yeah by 11. And the clips you know, I see. Right. It don't take God a long time to move. See? Oh, the clips yeah. I see, y'all. Right. <laughs> I say, I got to visit when I get there. I don't know Ooh. if we're going to make it to convocation this year, but when oh. I do, I do have, I have family there too. So maybe yes, we can come, come by and see yes, you. Yes. All right. So um, any upcoming projects? Ooh. I would just, I would just say stay tuned. That's all I'm going to say. Okay. I can't, I ain't been, uh-uh, just say stay tuned. 
Stay hey, tuned. Hey. So follow. You all heard her. You got to follow that Instagram. Say that Instagram one more time. K drum one two three. K drum one two three. Y'all got to follow her on Instagram. See what's coming up next. All right, because I'm gonna right. be, be watching. Yes, ma'am. Yes, ma'am. <laughs> so, so where do you see yourself in five years? Um. Wow. Branching out. Um. Traveling even more. Uh, being able to give back to the community, I think there would be something cool to be doing in the next five years. You know, mm-hmm. um, not saying I'm not doing it. I love community outreach and things, but to be able to um, branch out even more along that line, I think that that would be cool. Um, working with more artists, be back for another podcast or two. You never know, so you know, yeah. Yes. Um, I'm I'm very excited, not only for myself but for you as well. I think. Aww. Thank you so much. I just want to say thank you. This. Is- oh, you you are so welcome. I appreciate it. I mean, I feel like I don't know. I feel like I know your family. I was talking to your mom when we were scheduling this, and I got to tell her my testimony, and she got to encouraging me, and I'm like, wow. And that's the way it should be, you know. Right. I'm like, dang it, they feel like family, and I know we just went. <laughs> But thank you so much, Christian. Thank you so much, KJ. Make sure you guys go follow her on Instagram, kdrum123. Make sure you see, look forward to what's coming up next. And I just want to encourage you to keep doing what you're doing. Keep humbling yourself under the mighty hand of God and just receive every blessing and his grace and every door opening, doors of favor, doors of just exposure, are coming your way. I do believe in Jesus' name. So be blessed. Thank you so much, everybody. Thank you. All right. Until next time, okay? Yes, ma'am. See (laughs) y'all.